Welcome back to our channel and our nine week Irish adventure. Now in this episode we're heading for Limerick. Big East, Big East. Sorry, this is uh, false advertising. Stu emailed the CEO this morning. Try not to think about it, but I yeah. am. You probably look still touching. God, this is such a strong smell of gas in the van. Error number one. It's unusual for me to be ahead of Stu. Welcome to Getaway Geese. We are Stu and Jane, and with Harry, our Ford Custom Auto Camper, we share our adventures. So join us in this Our Rough Guide series to campervanning in Ireland. If you like our videos, please help us by pressing that like button, subscribing, and why not drop us a comment, as we love to hear from you. So we're just driving through Glynn, uh, we stopped overnight in a small car park down on the front. It was really all right. It was quite yeah, nice, actually. It was, uh, yeah. And it's 200 metres from a, a pub. We had a pint by the fire, which is... We've, we've fallen in love with pubs with open fires. It's just... So today's mission is to get some LPG for the final time. The trip, I think that's all we'll need. It hasn't cost us a lot in um, LPG, has it? No, I think we've had three stops. Of LPG, so it's it's I don't know twenty quid for eight eight weeks. I mean, the only problem we find in the UK is that we have trouble finding it sometimes, and I don't know if you, you are, we haven't struggled here. We woke up this morning. It's Saturday, and normally Stu would have a bacon butty, but we had our colonic hill tea. Yeah, we've veggie been, pudding. <laughs> we've been converted, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> Stu emailed the CEO this morning <laughs> to tell her how we felt about the product. LPG, uh, Limerick, have a walk around Limerick. The sun's out, so that should be a nice little fresh walk around the city if we can get parked up. And then uh, I think we'll start to head in inland. We're going to come off the coast now. We're going to spend a few days in our last week in the centre of Ireland, there's a lock we're going to go around. We're on our day's countdown now, which is... Uh, Trying not to think about it, but I yeah. am. <laughs> yeah. In a way, we've, we sort of said last night, it's almost as if we... Resigned. <laughs> yeah, like... Resigned to the fact we've got to go home. Yeah, we're already in going home mode. We yeah. need to stop that because we've still got another... There's a week. Well, just four under, days, under five, four days. Five. We actually pull in at the Flying Boat Museum car park in Foynes again to drop off some recycling. But we're soon back underway, although that early morning sun is making Stu's driving a little difficult. And finally, the sun is out of our eyes and we start to head for the more populated city of Limerick. And while we're starting to leave coastal roads behind, tractors are still a key road user we come across. And Stu seizes his opportunity with a straight and empty road ahead to make a safe overtake. And I must admit, it feels really weird and unfamiliar being on a dual lane motorway, instead of the narrow roads with grass down the middle that we've come to love. God, this is such a strong smell of gas in the van. I'm literally sat here waiting for Stu to see when he comes out, is he going to have a treat for us? We've literally, somehow, we've flipped into holiday mode with our eating. And like we we literally live from one treat to the next at the moment. I don't know what's wrong with us. Oh no, he doesn't look like he has. Ah, <gasps> no treat. What's he thinking? Ooh. He didn't get a treat. Three and a half euros. I'm going to get some petrol. Right? Oh, oh right. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't the treat run. Three pound, three something euros. So what off. about? I found out my card. Leave me card with her while I came back. So oh. I can put leave me card with her, then come back. That's weird. Which is a bit weird. Well, especially like for the price. That's something I normally yeah, do. Yes, it's, it's a bit weird leaving your card. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps you look dodgy. 
No, no, it's a policy, it's said on the oh, thing, that's okay. a sign. You probably look still dodgy. You still look dodgy. So, what, how much are we putting in, half a tank? Oh, uh, yeah. I wonder what the treat's going to be. What time is it? I don't know if it's too early for chocolate, I don't know what time it is. Mm. Whisper? Whisper gold. Oh, what's in a whisper gold? I wouldn't mind, it's not even that old. Let's put on that battery again. I'll, I'll just put a full battery in there. And it's because it's just carrying on. <laughs> well, is it not turning off no, when it should do? It's a Hmm? Welcome for a visit to Parkway, Parkway Shopping Centre. Make a U-turn now and then enter the roundabout and take the first exit. Error number one. It's all right, these roundabouts telling to be in one lane, but if you don't know, you, you get to it, it's two leading lanes. Yeah, you've just got to go with it, haven't you? A traffic jam. We haven't seen one of those for a while. And after a few wrong turns and a general moan, we're heading straight for the city centre and a car park. He's flashed you. He I'm flashed you. I'm not going through the gates. Yeah. You have arrived at your destination. And for a Saturday, this seems to be lots of space. Right. Do you want to start the security? Drill. And we're at the Old Potato Market Merchants Quay next to St Mary's Cathedral, should you be in need of a car park in the city. It's conveniently situated by the banks of the Shannon River and it's in easy walking distance to King John's Castle. So we're on the uh, banks of the Shannon in Limerick. The sun's beautiful at the moment. It's gone really calm after all the uh, weather we've got, but you can see that the river's really swollen. We're going to do what's called the Three Bridges Walk. There's three bridges. And we're actually going to go over to uh, King John's Castle. And that's an installation just for us. We have just been so blessed with the weather today. We've had some quite bad weather <laughs> over the last week, so it's really nice. We're doing what they call the um, Three Bridges Walk today, which is actually Three Bridges. <laughs> it is. It's unusual for me to be ahead of Stu. We walk around the entrance of the castle and pay to get in making our way up the stairs into a very impressive visitor centre. Between 2011 and 2013, the castle underwent a redevelopment programme, costing 5.7 million, and they take you on the journey through the centuries with interactive displays. ...to the supreme head of the church, in the service of the king, sexting the present Irish rebels. And we're really impressed by the modern multimedia approach on how they tell the history of Ireland and especially about the evolution of Limerick and the role of the castle itself. The castle's history goes back many centuries and it's evolved and changed over the years. It was first established in 922 AD when Vikings built a base on King's Island where the castle sits today. Anglo-Normans arriving in 1172 changed everything and the city was burned to the ground in 1174. The Anglo-Normans finally captured the area in 1195 under John, Lord of Ireland. A castle was then built on the orders of King John and bearing his name and it was completed around 1210. This interactive model of the city lights up key buildings. And the holograms engage you and brings to life the lives of the people that once lived there. Ah, uh, there you are. Tell me, 
Is Tom de Mason armed at work? Good day, friend. Tarry a moment and answer me this. Will it be heads or tails? Make haste, make haste. The centre is superbly lit, giving an atmospheric feel, as can be seen rather gruesomely, where these beheaded faces show the expressions at the time that they met their death. The castle was severely damaged as part of the 1642 Siege of Limerick. There was no siege artillery available, so the attacking force dug tunnels under the walls to destabilise the foundations. However, those inside surrendered just before they collapsed the walls, although by now the foundations were so destabilised that parts of the walls had to be pulled down afterwards and rebuilt. This interactive counter shows the number of deaths in that siege, and it brings home the stark reality of the event. We then move down under the floor level to where the archaeological excavations of the foundations and walls are, and it shows the evidence of the various phases of the evolution of the castle. And we finally move outside into the castle grounds, where again the archaeology is explained in the context of the castle's history. In one of the rooms, the stonemason explains his work. The mason's mark. There are two on each block. The first shows which way the stone fits into the wall. We take a walk up to the ramparts. And in the fresh wind, we get a different view of the city and the river and you can see the strategic location of the castle with the natural defence of the river on one side. And it's time for that three bridge walk that Stu's promised me and I must admit it was great to be out in the sun and just walking along. So this first bridge is the Tommen Bridge and this was originally the only bridge connecting the old walled city of Limerick with County Clare. This is the Treaty Stone, and it's a limestone block upon which it's believed that the Treaty of Limerick was signed in 1691, signifying the end of the Williamite Jacobite War. And from then on, Limerick was known as the Treaty City. And we get close to the river, and you can really feel its force. The mighty Shannon is a tidal river and it was and is the lifeblood of Limerick. The river is named after the Celtic goddess Siona, and it's the longest river in Ireland at 360 kilometres, or 223 miles. And unfortunately, the river has taken lives relatively recently of workers performing repair work. Bridge number two is in sight, and I challenge the tour guide for failing to deliver the three walk outcomes. Sorry, this is uh, false advertising. Stu's brought us on the three bridge walk. But actually, one of the bridges you don't walk over. No, well, since you, well, you said we walk over. <laughs> I said it was a three bridge tour. What? There's number two. I'll wait here, you can walk over and walk back again if you feel so. I do feel like I should walk over that if I'm going to do three bridges. No, I'm good. This bridge is called the Sarsfield Bridge and it commemorates Patrick Sarsfield, the Earl of Lucan, a leading figure in the Jacobite army in the 1691 siege. And the bridge was actually once a swivel bridge to allow for the passage of ships along the Shannon. Now the final bridge on this tour is the newest of the Limerick city bridges and it was opened in 1988. And it's known as the Whistling Bridge due to the whistling noise caused by the wind blowing through the gaps under the bridge. This sculpture is by Limerick-born artist Michael Doohan, and it commemorates the hard-working dockers of Limerick. 
We then seem to go through a modern art area of the city where the buildings are brightly coloured and the bollards take on their own character. And it looks like maybe this building is about to be painted with all the shapes marked out. And I particularly love this octopus. But we soon crumble and walk into town in search of some fast food. And it looks like there's a lot of roadworks going on. Unfortunately, our new mics are causing some issues. OK, this time it's happening. Everything's on. We are just leaving Limerick and we just went for a McDonald's, which is really nice. We haven't had a McDonald's for months and months. Some junk food. Yeah, but it was nice. We went to the castle. It was um, really good. I actually recommend it if you're in Limerick to go visit the castle. Yeah, it was 12 euros each, um, which I thought was good. Again, to just do their history well. Limerick's nice. We didn't really go in. Apart from McDonald's, we just sort of went to the edge of it. It's a really busy it's Saturday. Yeah, we, we parked easily though, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We, we, we parked in a place called the Potato Market. That was um, eight euros for the whole day. It was, I think it was two euros per hour or something like that, but like eight euros for the whole day. It's a huge old factory that must have been in use for about 200 years. They did, what was it, flax, flour and... So, uh, yeah, over the century, well, over, yeah, the, yeah, over, the the, century. over its life, it has yeah. changed what it was producing. 1850 to 1870. 1877 to 1844. 1884. Yeah, what was the last uh, one that was? The last one was um, condensed milk. 1881 to 2011. Condensed milk. Wow, how many years is that? It was condensed milk, I think. I sort of remember it. It isn't a thing now, is it? That sets, a, sets itself in history at that time because I sort of remember condensed milk. You know, as a young child. Think of, think of the past, but I had to tell him that it's still going to. Is it? I can't. Yeah, I, yeah. I'd never seen condensed no, milk. No, you can't still get condensed milk. I don't know what people use it for. Yeah. They're going to regenerate re uh, that into, develop that into something as well by the looks of it. And we get a better view of the old factory, which shows the red brick chimney stack. Now, originally it was 30 feet higher prior to the 1960s, and it stood originally at 150 feet. Um, we're just heading out, out of Limerick now, uh, looking for a park up. Um, rugby's on, so Jane's going to be watching the rugby. There's a couple of matches, international matches on. Yeah. I'd known Stu two years before I realised that he wasn't such a big fan of rugby. <laughs> he just yeah, watched it with that. me out of politeness, but I think it's grown on him over the years, so I like to think that he loves it as much as I do. One of the things that's going to soften the blow from this trip when we get back is that we're going to see England uh, versus South Africa, uh, which is just a lifetime dream for me to watch England play, uh, all thanks to Stu. So we're really looking forward to that. And so we head out to Lot Dirk, which is part of the freshwater system of the Shannon. You have arrived at your destination. Whoa. Well, oh, the lake's infested with zebra mussels. So it looks like they're causing a problem, whatever zebra mussels are. So the car park suffered a bit of flooding at the moment. But I'm working on the basis it's quiet and we're okay, so we should be all right now. We've had a lot of rain in the last 72 hours prior to the day, so that's probably why. So I've parked slightly up from where we are. Can easily pull off, it's a problem. You look at the past 10 games, Wales averaging around two tries a game.
And while I watch the rugby, the rain comes in. But they've obviously gone over that. So that's the biggest thing, I think, when you look at Wales, is just their ability to score tries. And surprisingly, two boats come off the lock. When they were in New Zealand's 22. Mm. Oh! Well, I can bounce it, try here and take the bounce to 54. Did you see that? Go in. That's the best way for the tries into the water. Yeah, but it's a big drop. Yeah, then they drop, then they drive onto it. And they were, in fact, fishermen that we assume have just come up for the weekend. And as ever, Ireland's weather changes. With the drizzle gone, the clear night skies draw in, and Tom the drone gets a flight to reveal the loch's beauty. And we'll see you in the next episode. So thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video then help us grow the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. And we'll hopefully see you in the next episode of Our Travels in Harry.